history. Um, and I think that was, it was very beautiful, it was very elegant of her to do that, and of course, very, very romantic. In the early 90s, Diana's love for pearl chokers, inherited from the Spencer family, created a new fashion trend. She almost started single-handedly what I call the new romantic craze, and that pearl choker became a badge, a symbol of, this, of the new romantic look, all her pie-crust collars, the wonderful frills that she wore. Um, the pearls really played into that extremely, extremely well. In 1995, at the National Gallery, Diana met the model Twiggy. She combined a set of simple pearl earrings with a choker, with layers of tiny pearls worn high on the neck. The pearls set off her complexion. I mean, she was such a beautiful girl with such wonderful glowing skin, and the pearls emphasized her, her beauty. Um, they were quite shy and coy, and again, of course, they suited her as, as she was at, at the time. Um, and they just started, uh, you know, they launched a million pearl chokers. They kicked off the most huge craze for pearl chokers. In her private life with her sons, she was just a single mother. Her casual attire required no formal jewels. For her charity work, she often dressed like a businesswoman in a smart suit with minimal decoration. A regular part of Diana's day involved shopping in Chelsea, the fashionable district of London. One of her favourite stores was Butler & Wilson, a costume jewellery shop. We know that she was very fond of rummaging around, um, finding a fun piece of jewellery. She appeared in a tuxedo looking stunning, wearing the uh, Butler & Wilson uh, serpent on her, on her lapel. She even dared to wear uh, a jewelled order, a star. She wore it right in the centre. Diana mingled easily with other shoppers who were unaware that a princess was shopping next to them. Very easy with the staff, always had a great sense of humour, and enjoyed shopping. So we have seen a lot of very famous people, and they never, they're always a foot smaller or they are not as beautiful as what you imagine. With her, she was the reverse. She was a foot taller than what you imagined. She, wa she actually glowed, so she had wonderful piercing blue eyes. And she was extraordinary. So whatever she was wearing anything, it always enhanced it. She always bought very classic things, too, that, she would, that you would see her wearing all the time. She bought a little pair of earrings that were French glass earrings, black French glass earrings. She wore them all the time. They were five pounds. So it wasn't intrinsic things. It was because it went. She wore things because it actually fitted with what she was wearing. Another famous pair of earrings that she wore all the time were silver gold earrings, just a plain gold. So she accessorized herself. She was so she would try things from the very simple to the more very exciting things. A big star necklace or a wonderful star pinned on the back of her hair. She was so much part of the 80s style. And it was at that time that costume jewellery was really booming. She was a young girl, she loved the fun, she loved the wit and whimsy of costume jewellery, and she really indulged. And I think she had a bit of fun. You know, she liked to, um, to mix the very grand royal jewels with uh, a piece of costume jewellery from Butler and Wilson. Diamond earrings were clever fakes. Sapphires were false. These earrings were costume jewellery. It was often hard to tell genuine gems from fun fakes. The false jewels almost became a metaphor, suggesting the double life Diana was leading behind the scenes. South Korea, 1992. The last tour days before the Wales' separation. The splendor of Diana's jewels cannot disguise her troubled expression. But it was in Portugal in 1987 that the cracks in their marriage began to appear. Bulimia had taken a grip of her, and she and Charles were drifting apart. She later said, Portugal was the last time we were close as man and wife. While Charles carried on seeing Camilla, Diana transferred her affections to a young cavalry officer, James Hewitt, 
who helped her to maintain an equilibrium in her life. He gave her a gift of emerald earrings, which were never seen in public. On the night of Charles's televised admission of adultery with Camilla, Diana appeared at the Serpentine Gallery wearing a sensuous low-cut short gown designed by Christina Strombolian. Her giant sapphire and pearl choker around her neck. At the Serpentine, when Charles was admitting to his infidelity in the television programme, and Diana in that little black dress with the wonderful jewel on it, was making a statement. She was saying, here I am, I am gorgeous, and I'm my own woman, and responding, if you like, to what Charles was doing, but she responded via the camera, not with words. In 1995, Diana again wore her sapphire and pearl choker at a charity function in New York, this time with a nightdress-style gown by avant-garde designer Galliano. British-born Liz Tilberis befriended Diana, seen here in London during a TV interview before she became editor of the American fashion magazine Harper's Bazaar and moved to New York. Diana was very fortunate in that she also had advice from some of the best fashion editors and some of the best magazine editors, um, not only in the UK but all around the world, and she formed a very important personal relationship with, with Liz Tilberis. And I'm sure that Liz, Liz had great style, and I'm sure that she steered Diana in those early days towards developing her own very strong, very individual style. Diana was in New York to honour Liz, who was fighting cancer. It was very close to her, very sadly, that she did not survive. But Diana, right to the end, helped cancer charities any time that Liz was very bravely and stalwartly putting together a charity. She involved Diana in it. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm immensely proud to be here in New York tonight with you all, to be giving this award to a lady from my own country who is also a dear friend and whose talent and courage has been an inspiration to us all. Ladies and gentlemen, Liz Tilberis. Sadly, Liz died of cancer four years later. In June 1997, Diana attended a charity performance of Swan Lake at the Royal Albert Hall, performed by the English National Ballet, a company she regularly supported. Her sparkling South Sea pearl and diamond necklace, made by Garrard's, the crown jewellers, was loaned to her for the evening. Diana's love of ballet goes back to her childhood, when she wanted to be a ballerina, but grew too tall. At the beginning of her royal life, she was patron of the London City Ballet and regularly attended their rehearsals. Many of the dancers were close to her in age, and she enjoyed talking about the practicalities of dance routines. The South Sea Pearl and Diamond Necklace eventually had matching earrings, which were made later, but Diana never wore them. The Swan Lake Suite was eventually sold at auction to an American collector for over £300,000. Some of the proceeds went to charity. On her 36th birthday, Diana was at the Tate Gallery wearing the Cambridge Emeralds. Shortly after, she agreed to join Dodie Fayed in the south of France. On holiday, Diana fell for Dodie, the playboy son of her host, Mohammed Al Fayed. Dodie showered her with gifts of jewellery. He wanted to impress her on their last day aboard the luxury yacht Jonical. They left the yacht for Paris, where they visited the Ritz Hotel owned by Dodie's father. Diana was wearing gold earrings, a gold watch, a seed pearl bracelet with diamond encrusted ends, and a gold ring set with diamonds, all given to her by Dodie. They left the Ritz by a back exit, hoping to throw off waiting paparazzi. Their car, driven at speed, crashed in an underpass. Dodie died instantly, Diana later in hospital. When Charles saw Diana's body, he was upset that one earring was missing. It was found later embedded in the crushed Mercedes. It was to Kensington Palace that her coffin was taken. 
During her life, she had used her home in London, from where she attended so many occasions as the People's Princess.